we have two position vectors of a and b. So O to A is 3 minus 9. And then O to B is 2, 10. And then we're told that M is the midpoint of OB, and N lies on OA such that OA is equal to 3 lots of ON. So we can represent this on a diagram. I'm not going to try to draw it to scale. I'm not worrying about what the actual vectors of OA and OB are. You usually don't need to for these kinds of diagrams. So I'm just putting A and B in random places. And if we need to change our diagram afterwards, we can. So we're told that M is the midpoint of OB. So M is then here somewhere. So that's the midpoint. And N lies on OA such that OA is three lots of ON. So O to A is three times bigger than O to N. N would therefore be here somewhere and it would be in a ratio of 1 to 2. So O to N to N to A, so this length to this length, would be in a ratio of 1 to 2. That would be the case if N is a third of the way along from O to A. And then we're told that P is the intersection of AM and BN. So AM is this, and then BN is that. And then we're told that P is the point of intersection of AM and BN, so this point here, this is point P. And we're trying to work out the ratio of NP to PB, so this length to this length. Okay, so we don't know where P is along this line. We don't know how far it is along this line. So that's what we want to work out. So what we can do is we can say that NP is equal to some scalar multiple of nb, or in other words, n to p, so from here to here, is some fraction of this total length. And we're trying to work out what that fraction is. If we can do that, then that will help us work out what this ratio is. So we don't know what lambda is. We want to work out what lambda is. We can do that by taking two different paths between the same two points. So I think I'm going to use o to p, it doesn't have to be O to P, you can use a different path too, but I think this is a nice one because we can go from O to N and then from N to P, that's one route that we can take. Another route that we can take is to go from O to M and then from M to P. So MP, that vector, we don't know how far along P is along this line, so we can do a similar kind of thing to what we did here, and we can say that MP is a scalar multiple of MA. Okay, so then these two vectors become, so ON plus lambda NB, and this one becomes OM plus mu MA. So if we work out what these two vectors of OP are, and then if we equate them to one another, so solve them simultaneously, we can work out what lambda and mu are. And once we have what lambda is, we can then put that back into this equation to work out how far p is along this line. So, all right, let's try and figure out what each of these things are. Let's start with the first one. Let's work out what on is to begin with. So if you look at this equation here, oa is three lots of on, that would mean that o to n is a third of OA. OA is what I have up here, 3 minus 9. So this is then a third of 3 minus 9. So divide both of those terms by 3, and that gives us 1 minus 3. So this OP, to start with, ON is 1 minus 3. Now we're adding lambda NB. So we need to work out what NB is. N to B is this vector here. So to work that out, I'm going to take this root from N to O and then from O to B. So let's write this below here. NB is equal to NO plus OB. NO is the opposite of what we have here, so it's the negative of that. That will be minus 1, 3. OB we are given in the beginning, so that would be 210, so plus 210, this will then be 113. 
Okay, so we have what NB is. Let's put that in here. So plus lambda times NB, which is 113. So we have our first value for OP, our first vector for OP. Now we can work out the second. So let's start with OM. O to M, so what do we know about that? O to M is this part here. That is half of O to B. Because we know that M is the midpoint, we can then say that O to M is half of O to B. Maybe I'll write that here. O to M is a half of O to B. So a half of this would just be 1, 5. So this starts off OM is 1, 5. And then we're adding mu MA. So we need to work out what MA is. So let's look at our diagram again. We want to work out what this vector here is. And we can do that by going from M to O and then A, O to A. So MA is M to O plus O to A. M to O is the negative of a half OB. Remember we worked out what OM is. OM is 1, 5. So M to O is the negative of that. That would then be minus 1, minus 5. And then O to A, we have from the beginning 3 minus 9. So plus 3 minus 9. And this gives us 2 minus 14. So that is MA. We can put that here. Okay, and then we have our two values, our two vectors for OP. The left-hand side, I'll put it in purple, and the right-hand side is in blue. And we can then equate those two things. They take us between the same two points, so they must be equal. The purple OP, if I write it as one single vector, is 1 plus lambda minus 3 plus 13 lambda. So that's just multiplying this out and then adding them together. And then the blue vector, so the blue OP, so the blue OP is 1 plus 2 mu, 5 minus 14 mu. And then we can equate the I components and the J components separately. So for the I components, the equation we get is 1 plus lambda is equal to 1 plus 2 mu. The ones cancel, we get lambda is equal to 2 mu. I'll call that equation 1. Equate the j components, so we get minus 3 plus 13 lambda is 5 minus 14 mu. And I'll rewrite this as 13 lambda plus 14 mu is equal to 8. I'll call that equation 2. And we want to solve equations 1 and 2 simultaneously. So I will replace the lambda with 2 mu, so we get 13 times lambda, which is 2 mu, plus 14 mu is equal to 8. And then this gives us 26 mu plus 14 mu is 8. 40 mu is 8. And then mu would be, if you rearrange that, 8 over 40, which is the same thing as 1 over 5. And if mu is 1 over 5, then lambda would be 2 times that. So lambda would be 2 over 5. So now that we have mu and lambda, that has enabled us to work out what n to p is. Remember we're trying to work out the ratio of n to p to p to b. So we can work out what n p is now. n p is lambda n b. So n p is lambda n b. And n b was this, 113. So I can multiply this out now. So this is the same thing as 2 over 5. And then 2 over 5 times 13 is 30, 26 over 5. So that is NP. So the next thing to work out would be PB, P to B, which is this vector here. So then I can work that out by going from P to N and then back from N to B. Because we have what n to b is, 
we have what we can work out what p to n is as well. That's just the negative of what we just worked out. So let's write that down. So p to b is p to n plus n to b. So p to n is the negative of this. So minus 2 over 5 minus 26 over 5 plus nb. nb was 113. So plus 113. We add these two things and we end up with 3 fifths and 39 over 5. Okay, so we're trying to work out what the ratio of NP to PB is. So NP to PB, we can work out by simply looking at one of the components for both of these vectors. So for instance, we can look at the I component for both vectors, 2 over 5 and 3 over 5. And the ratio of NP to PB will split in that same ratio. So it'll be 2 over 5, 2, 3 over 5. And if you times both of these things by 5, you end up with 2 to 3, which would be our final answer. So we could have done that with the i components. We could also do that with the j components. So just so you can see, if we were to do the exact same thing, but now with the j components, so 26 over 5 and 39 over 5. So I'll first multiply both of these by 5. And then I can divide by 13, and we end up with, again, 2 to 3. So that is our final answer, 2 to 3.